This week, Rebel Moon Part 2 drops on Netflix. Leading up to it, I'm trying to review some of Zack Snyder's films, which I haven't previously reviewed. Today, we're talking about his very first movie, Dawn of the Dead. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your thoughts on Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, and give me that point of reference. Are you someone like me that watched the George Romero zombie films prior to watching Dawn of the Dead, and you were there for kind of the the revival of the zombie genre that happened 20 years ago in large part because of Dawn of the Dead as well as 28 Days Later. Or you may be someone that's one of my younger viewers that you're kind of from the post-Walking Dead era and you watched Dawn of the Dead after watching a lot of the other revival stuff that's happened over the last 10 or 15 years. I'd love to hear your point of reference on all of that. As I just mentioned, I am someone that had watched the George Romero films many, many times. In particular, the original Dawn of the Dead was by far my favorite of the Romero uh, zombie films. Had the, the DVD with all the special features, watched all that fun stuff. So I was very excited and curious when they said that they were doing a new version of the film. And it, it's interesting because at the time... Zack Snyder was nobody <laughs> like he'd done music videos and a bunch of commercials, but he wasn't a, a name at all. And it was written by James Gunn. Now, there was some rewriting that took place, but the credited writer is James Gunn, <laughs> who was famous at the time for writing the two Scooby-Doo movies. So it was like this no name director who had done commercials and the guy that wrote Scooby-Doo that's what we knew about this thing before it came out. I was like, what on earth is going on with, with the new Dawn of the Dead film? And then it came out and it was this kind of reinvention of the genre that gave it this big, gigantic burst of energy. And it's just absolutely fascinating to me the way history is played out where the director of the film went on to do the Snyderverse, the DCEU, and then now the writer of it is going off to do the follow-up to that, the DCU. That's wild. It's so fascinating to me how these, these moments in time, these singular events films that in many regards aren't enormous, massive hits. They didn't like radically change cinema. You didn't realize that this really important moment was happening. But two incredibly influential filmmakers, storytellers of our time now... Both kind of got one of their big, gigantic breaks on Dawn of the Dead. But what do I think about the film? Let's get started with the good. And I thought this was a great 21st century new adaptation, reimagining of Dawn of the Dead. Now... It doesn't have George Romero's social commentary. It's not designed to be a feature-length metaphor about how we've all turned into zombies that are just mindlessly pursuing capitalism and uh, materialism. And thus, when we turn into literal zombies, we just mindlessly walk towards them all. Like, it, it doesn't have that but not every movie has to have a social message and on its own rights as just this high octane 21st century zombie movie. It is a thrilling action packed ride with characters that I thoroughly enjoy. And so much of that, I think really does come from the two creative forces that were such a big part of this film, a script from James Gunn, who has gone on to prove that his skill set is writing ensembles. That obviously he broke into the A-list with Guardians of the Galaxy, and then he did Suicide Squad, um, and then even when he did Peacemaker, that's an ensemble show. He's great with ensembles of misfits. Even his Scooby-Doo movies, that's an ensemble. It taking these odd groups of people and making each character interesting. We'll talk about that more in a second, but you have a, a James Gunn script where you have an ensemble, you have some wit to it, some, some sharpness to it, combined with dynamic Zack Snyder visuals. 
Zack Snyder's ability to just bring things to life and, and just have energized action sequences, interesting images. Um, and he, he's that was prior to even making this film in commercials, like he, he was kind of famous for his use of color, uh, his camera work, and that's where they went, hey, maybe this guy should do a movie. And then, of course, that's what he's famous for or infamous for or criticized for being, oh, he's all styled, no substance. Well, here you have Zack Snyder with all of his style bringing or adapting a script from James Gunn who knows how to write characters and plot. And you put the two together and I think you get something that really works and on its own terms. Uh, you could call it like, it is Dawn of the Dead. It is people like Dawn of the Dead, the whole concept, zombie apocalypse, people go to the mall. You could call it something like Dead Rise, <laughs> like the video game, which is essentially Dawn of the Dead, the video game. You could do that. Um, they decided to officially call it a remake, but, but it works on its own terms. From the get-go, it starts off with a fantastic opening sequence where you just see the collapse of the world. You follow this nurse, you hear murmurs of people getting bit, people acting really weird. You follow her, her into her normal day-to-day -day life, see that she's super normal, and then it turns into danger in her household, chaos in her neighborhood, and then the world in utter decline. And it's so efficient. It does it so quickly but you feel like you're on this escalating journey of chaos as the world falls apart in all of 15 minutes or so. And you get nasty zombie action. You get gore effects. You get Zack Snyder camera work. There's even like this shot on the car. Just immediately you get the idea that this is a guy that knows how to visualize things and then you get the title credits for the film montaging through the end of the world before things pick back up with our main plot line. But it's it's so efficient. It does so much in so little time while also being thrilling, exciting in showing society break down in just a few minutes. But a big, gigantic part of what I think makes this movie work and stand out as kind of its own thing is that you have an interesting group of characters that you want to spend time with at the mall. It's a diverse set of characters where each is interesting enough on their own. They're grounded enough in reality to be believable. They don't feel like big flashy movie characters. It's just people from all these different jobs, all these different backgrounds. You put them in a scenario where each of their good attributes as well as all their faults benefit the group, but also put it in jeopardy in certain types of ways. They're different enough that as you kind of put them in this pressure cooker and things get exciting and thrilling and dangerous and they're challenged, they all respond differently. They all snap in their own ways. The unusual bonds are formed between characters, unlikely friendships. Um, everyone is broken in some sense because they, whether they were broken before all of this happened or because of all of this, there's, they've lost so much. People become impulsive, people become irrational, but it's, but it's all believable. People make unbelievably stupid choices, but in the context, at the moment that it happens, you buy into it because you just feel the tension cooking like so many movies where people make bad choices you're like oh that only happened to move the plot forward here they show people unraveling throughout the whole course of the film so that when a girl impulsively runs out and steals a car to save her dog you believe it because everyone is on edge everyone is just latching on to the one thing they have left because they lost everything else and as stupid as a dog is to like risk everything over you buy into the impulsive decision in that context. In the interviews on the, the, the Blu-ray, James Gunn talks about how he, he wanted it to be a redemption story, about how these are broken characters and how many of them 
were failures before shady people or even he's talking about, you know, who are the people that are going to survive the zombie apocalypse? They're probably not going to be the best people. They're people willing to do some stuff to survive. And so I think the best example of this is CJ, who at the beginning of the movie, you hate. <laughs> like, you hate like this guy's a jerk. He's like just so frustrating. And by the end of the film, he's still the same guy. His personality hasn't changed, but they've given him enough of this redemptive arc where his belligerence, his his frustration gets channeled differently. His stubbornness shifts. And so he's like your favorite character by the end of the film. And then you have people that are just the fun jerks. Ty Burrell, who is you know primarily known for Modern Family, and then he was you know, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. And so he's playing like these very wholesome characters. Here plays this total narcissistic jerk, and, and you kind of buy into it. And he adds humor into it, where he's the sarcastic jerk. It doesn't feel quippy. It feels like, yeah, there'd be some guy like this that would just be so irreverent, so self-absorbed that he would be this frustrating. And, that, I mean, you have the... Uh, um, the the upcoming father who is so optimistic in this horrible situation and he's so off base. You have our two lead characters that have this romance that never really becomes a romance. And you, you buy into that. There, there are reluctant leaders that are not the obvious leaders. And that's kind of what makes it interesting. It's the ensemble that it, they don't make sense together. It doesn't that this would work or in even some sense, but it, it kind of does. And then, of course, you throw Ving Rhames into there, who's the military experience police officer, but he's not naturally heroic. He's willing to, he's a man of action, but he's not self-sacrificial. He kind of has to slowly be pulled into all of this, and, and you like that. And it, everyone has their own role in the story. Everyone has their place in the dynamics. And so it, it works well. And of course, you're, you are talking about uh, an action movie and you get 21st century intense, high octane action uh, without needing to over dramatize everything. But you do get them, them making a battle bus to drive through um, hordes of zombies, finding ways to have explosions in the midst of all of that. You have the armory, so they're able to get cool guns and all sorts of running through tunnels and just enough action set pieces, just enough setbacks to keep things moving at a very nice, brisk pace. Other thing I really liked about it is that it, it felt like it, it tried to be honest with the way a lot of this stuff plays out. So if you go on a dangerous rescue mission, you're going to lose people. If, if you send a dog on some difficult mission, maybe something will work with it, but something will also go wrong. If you turn uh, these little shuttles into battle buses and you have chainsaws, and, and while you're using a chainsaw while driving quickly in a very tight quarter situation, terrible things can happen. And so they do a lot of this stuff and they have victories. Some of the weird stuff they do, they, they accomplish it. They're able to turn lights on. They're able to rescue people. But there's also casualties along the way. They fail along the way. Some of these things go utterly wrong. Some heroic sacrifices have wins. Others have very little meaning to them at all. But it feels honest. So you don't know what will happen. You get a victory, but you also have a loss. And I think that's when you have a movie that feels fair and honest, especially in kind of a bleak world like this. So it has kind of everything that I kind of want from a zombie movie. Like this, this to me, if you're going to do 21st century Dawn of the Dead, th this is the movie that I want it to be. So I, this is one of my favorite zombie movies. Of course, the original Dawn of the Dead, utter classic itself. It's kind of tough to compare the two because one of them has all the benefits of a larger budget, 21st century technology, and the other one is this movie that basically um, was so pivotal in the genre and founding the all the tropes that every zombie movie since has copied, and of course, George Romero classic, but... Um, I, I, I love both of them, and I think both of them are classics. Are a few things about this one that I, I'm not terribly crazy about, so let's move on to the bad while I itch my eye. First thing that comes to mind here is that the pregnancy plot line felt like a misstep to me. This was the kind of the one thing in the movie that felt like 
shock value for the sake of shock value. Let's be disturbing just to like do something wild and crazy. Yeah, a pregnant woman gets bit, gives birth to a zombie baby. Yeah. Like it feels edgelord without having anything to say or do anything particularly interesting with it. So it's just kind of like this little side story in there that's like, that's that's pretty off-putting without having something about it that paid off besides like, oh, that was nasty and disturbing. Other one, the the color palette, the 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 darkness of the whole thing. I don't it it it's the like the one thing that kind of dates the movie that makes it pretty clear the exact time period this movie came out. And it's the look of like an oversaturation, high contrast, green filter that was very trendy for that time period. And maybe it works for this particular movie, but it it feels pretty trendy for for that time period. Last one on here, and this is um this is a pretty big one for me. The post credit ending. If you haven't seen the movie, spoilers. Don't don't listen to what I'm about to say. Skip ahead a little bit. The the post credit ending. I just don't like those type of nihilistic. Let's undo what we just did. Finales. So the the movie ends with them making it to the dock. We lose a lot of people. We lose over half the people along the way. Um, we lose one of our or several of our favorite characters. But there's this little moment of victory. It's not a happy ending, but it is. We 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 escaped the mall, and we're going off to with maybe finding something. There's an emotional feeling you have right there. And then it goes into the post credit stuff and it just undermines all of that. It undoes all of it to just kind of turn it into something negative and end instead on the just, you know, utter bleakness. And if you wanted to end on utter bleakness, end the movie there. Don't fake end on one note and then change it to be a different note. Like, I just don't like why, like, you wrote this to this end and then you did a different ending. <laughs> like, there are two entirely polar opposite emotional resolutions as I, I just don't like those sorts of things that undermine character choices the journey we've been on the emotion that I just felt all in a post credit scene don't do that write the movie that comes to one conclusion and stick to it if you want it to be depressing and they failed actually stick to that don't like give me one thing and Bait and switch, pull the rug out from underneath me. Ta-da! Actually, this is what happened. So, really didn't care all that much for that. Overall, this is one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. I find it to be very rewatchable and a great start to Zack Snyder's directorial career. And I wish he went back to kind of some of these simpler stories like this and not as overly complex and convoluted as it seems like he's drifted towards over the last 10 years. Overall, I'll give this one an A-. minus. On the entertainment scale, we'll go an 8.5 out of 10. And this is a must-see for zombie fans. If you enjoyed this video, I've done a bunch of other coverage of Zack Snyder movies. You can check it out right over here. Hey, thank you so much for watching. And keep talking movies and TV.